Flash Forward sent me their AD5X printer to test out, so let's get it out of the box and take a look. The AD5X is a core XY machine with a 220x220x220 by 220 by 220 build volume. It also supports four materials right out of the box has a maximum acceleration of 20,000 millimeters per second and can reach print speeds up to 600 millimeters per second. At the time of filming, it's selling for $399 US, which is very cheap for a machine with these specs. The design reminds me a lot of the Bamboo Labs P1P with the same bare bones metal frame construction. FlashForge also offers an optional enclosure kit if you want to keep everything contained and control your print environment. Assembly is very minimal. The first step is attaching the screen, which is a little unusual. The screen comes pre-mounted on this bracket. Uh, you just have to unbolt it, flip it up, and clip it into place. I'm not really sure why they did it this way since there's clearly a plug on the ribbon cable. It's not a big deal, just a little odd. Next, the multi-material unit attaches to the side of the printer. There's a mounting plate that goes on first that it attaches to, and I actually put this on upside down. The gray circle is supposed to be on the top. I fix this later off camera. Once the mounting plate is attached, the unit gets inserted and twisted and snaps into place. The four filament tubes coming out of the unit uh, combine into a four into one adapter and that adapter then attaches to the print head with a small screw. With that done, there's a cable that attaches from the back of the printer into the multi-material machine. And then the four spool holders clip onto the side of the printer. The spool holders are also spring loaded so as the printer retracts filament to switch colors, it'll actually spin the spools backwards to take up the slack, which is a pretty clever touch. The last step is to remove three screws from the build plate that are placed there during shipping to hold it in place. And once that's done, it's ready to print. The printer also comes with a small bag of accessories. Inside there's a cleaning tool that the manual says is meant for cleaning clogs. You also get a small package of grease for maintenance, a pair of side cutters, and a few other basic tools. There's also a tube of bed adhesive included, and this is the real deal. It's not just a repackaged glue stick. The bill plate is a double-sided textured PEI sheet, and I really like that it has the plastic handle on the front, so you don't have to worry about burning your hands when you grab the hot build plate. All right, let's power it up for the first time and see what the startup sequence looks like. Startup is pretty straightforward. You pick your language, then you connect to your Wi-Fi. The next screen gives you a QR code to link your printer to your FlashMaker account, but I skipped this step. Right after that, the machine jumps straight into a calibration routine. And once finished, it prompts you to load some filament. As soon as you start feeding filament into the multi-material unit, it automatically pulls the filament in and on screen, you can then select what type and color of material you're loading. Then you just repeat the process three more times. Something that caught me off guard was as soon as I finished loading the last filament, the machine went straight into printing a test file. I wasn't quite ready for that, so I paused the print so I could wipe the build plate down with isopropyl alcohol to make sure there was no oils or contaminants on the plate that would cause uh, adhesion problems. Once that was done, I resumed the print. The test model was a simple coin with the FlashForge logo on it in two colors, which printed fine. So once this was done, I wanted to move on to trying to slice my own model. The instructions tell you to download uh, FlashForge's slicer from their website, but it's just a reskin version of Orca Slicer, and I noticed it was only version 1.4, and I already have version 2.3, which has a profile for the 85X, so I just use that. I added a benchy and a calibration cube to the bed and sent it to print. I didn't see any issues with the benchy, and the dimensions of the calibration cube were pretty close to dead on. Next, I tried a multicolored benchy that comes pre-sliced on the machine. When you start the print, you get a menu showing the four colors being used, and you get to pick which channels you want to associate which color. I didn't see this menu on any of the prints that I sliced, though.
There didn't seem to be any issues with this bench either, other than a little bit of uh, black bleeding through on the red layers. But it seems odd. It looks like it was printing inside, and it's a handful of layers up. Uh, so it looks a little weird. And there's no other bleeding between any other layers, just the red and the black. Now that the testing was out of the way, it was time for a serious multicolor print. I had this Gordon Freeman file from Wexter on printables that I hadn't printed yet, and it seemed like the perfect model to stress the machine. I figured I might as well print this big, so I scaled it up to max out the print volume. First I printed the head that took about 27 hours and went through 688 filament changes. And as soon as that finished, I started the body print that took about 63 hours and went through 1,786 filament changes. With the printing done, let's get these supports off and see what the print looks like. I don't do a lot of multicolor printing myself due to the time it takes and uh, all the wasted filament from the purging, but I have to admit this looks pretty awesome. I'd say it's nearly perfect. I recently saw this multicolor print of an X-Wing from Galactic Armory online and it looked pretty awesome so I wanted to give it a try. It only takes about 7 hours to print. So I figured I'd try printing this on the Flash Forge and my Bamboo P1S to compare the two machines to see how they both uh, work. The only difference is I had to scale down the one on the Flash Forge about 10% to fit the build plate. But besides that, they're both using the same settings and same filament. And the results were I didn't see any major difference between the two prints. I did forget to turn supports off on the Flash Forge so you'll see some of that in the prints. And I did notice the head of the R2 unit uh, is not quite as good on the Flash Forge. Uh, it could be because it's scaled down a little smaller and it's even harder to print. But besides that, you gotta be really nitpicky to find any differences between the two. The last thing I wanted to try was combining PLA and TPU to make a flexible joint. I modeled up a quick test using a feature in Orca Slicer called beam interlocking that overlaps the two materials uh, to create a mechanical bond because TPU won't really stick to PLA very well. The machine handled printing TPU very well and at first everything seemed to be working fine. But as I kept flexing the print um, and it started to cool down, it seemed the TPU was printed too thick and the joint wasn't quite as strong as it started to break apart. So I tried again, but this time I only made the TPU one millimeter thick instead of two, and I designed an interlocking pattern myself. This time it worked perfectly. It flexed easily and it was solidly attached. This opens up a lot of possibilities in making functional prints that need flexible joints. So what's my impression of the machine after playing with it for about a week or so? I'd put it firmly in the buy column, as it's a pretty well-built machine, and for the price you can't really go wrong. 
A comparable machine is the Bamboo A1 with its AMS system. It's a little bit bigger of a build volume, but it's also a bed slinger instead of a Core Y machine, and it's a little bit more expensive. The Flash Forge is supposed to be a little bit faster on paper, but I don't know how that actually plays out in real life. I do like that this is a Core XY machine though, instead of a bed slinger, because if you're doing tall prints, there's less of an issue getting artifacting as the prints get taller and taller from the wobbling of the bed moving. Let me know in the comments what uh, your thoughts are on the machine and uh, give me some ideas on what else I can try printing on it to test it out. Also, I found if you're new to printing, the machine is very user friendly. It's pretty close to plug and play as you can get. The multicolor printing worked flawlessly, but it still has that problem of wasting a ton of filament when having to switch colors. If you're printing something uh, thin like this was, um, it wasn't that big of a deal because you don't go through that many layer changes, but uh, printing something like this was a different story. Printing something like this is pretty cool, but you really have to be thoughtful of what you're getting yourself into before you start. Now I've only been playing with the machine for a few weeks, so I can't really speak to how well it's going to hold up over time, but it's uh, built pretty solid and Flash Forge has been around for quite a while, so I'd be surprised if it didn't hold up. If you found this first look at the AD5X interesting, consider hitting that like button or maybe subscribing. It really helps the channel grow and lets me test out more machines. That's all I got for now. YouTube thinks uh, you'll like watching this video here. And if you want to see if you can 3D print a winch, check out this one here. Thanks for watching.